Hi everyone and welcome to IT Chronicles 10 and Tech. I'm Kirsty McGowan. I'm here today with Carlos Casanova. Hi Carlos. Hey Kirsty. And Shane Carlson. And Hello. today we have the pleasure of talking to Marcel Shaw from Avanti. Hi Marcel. Hey, how are you doing? Very well, thanks. Now, artificial intelligence and machine learning, there's there's a lot of misconceptions out there and there's a lot of um, a lot of talk about where we're going with this. So what's your take on it, just briefly? Well, artificial intelligence is, uh, is, we're already starting to see it and it's not going to be something that just hits us right in the face right away, but it's going to progress very quickly. And uh, uh, many analysts are saying over the next 75 years, we're going to see artificial intelligence progress and become much, much smarter. So, Marcel, I'm sorry, uh, sorry, Sean, um, Shane. Marcel, I guess the AI piece of this, where, where do we see the value really coming in for organizations that want to implement AI or even you know, machine learning? What's, their, what's the value proposition for that? Why are they going there? Artificial intelligence is able to look at a lot of data and it can start, and it, what it does is it looks at patterns. Uh, Generally, in the past, computers look at mathematical equations, you know, one plus one equals two, or if and then statements. If this means that, then that means oh, that. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I think that was Alexa, right? That was Alexa. Uh, Alexa's a great example. Let's take an example. If, uh, you know, I, I forget my keys a lot. Can Alexa help me find my keys? Uh, for Alexa to help me find my keys, she knows she would have to know that I take my keys when I leave the house. She would learn a pattern that uh, that I would that I would be performing every day before I leave the house. That pattern would uh, would uh, Alexa would be able to learn that um, the difference between me leaving the house to drive somewhere versus to go work in the yard. So the patterns that are being learned from something like an Alexa or something with artificial intelligence are remembered, and then uh, over time, once the pattern's established. Uh, then, then the uh, the device or the intelligence, the artificial intelligence, uh, can then act on it. And in, in the case of Alexa, it could actually help me find something. In a business world, it can look at patterns of uh, of markets, uh, you know, trends, things like that. Things, uh, thousands and thousands of different data points can be looked at and analyzed in seconds, uh, which is not possible really for humans to do. And then. Uh, artificial intelligence will remember that information for future uses where, you know, humans tend to, unless we document it very well, and then the future people that come in and work in our place, come in and read what we documented, those things can be forgotten very easily. Uh, so very little is remembered from, from one generation to the next, let's say, as we progress. So Marcel, I, I just actually got one. My uh, son just bought one for, uh, for the family for Christmas. And I guess the noise part of it, I wonder, because I'm just experiencing the whole Alexa, you know, AI thing in the house, right? And, you know, and I'm kind of wondering as I, you know, as I say the name, is Alexa going to jump in? And it's like, you know, if we're talking about Alexa, it jumps in. So how do organizations, how are organizations going to handle even that part of it? Because there's a lot of noise, right? That will they be able to learn that piece that like we're talking about you, but we don't want you to act on it? You know, same from a noise perspective in, you know, in the, just the normal data, you know, in, within a business. You know, is that part of what it's going to try and filter out? Well, artificial intelligence is going to have several different parts to it. Uh, one of them will be through the chatbot type technology. So when you talk to something or if you pick up the phone today, many times you can talk to a computer to reserve your airline tickets or something like that. Uh, so that's sort of a data entry point. Alexa or these, these home you know, chatbots, these are entry points. Right. And what they will do is they will profile things and then route them to the appropriate business process on the back end, which will also have artificial intelligence. So the noise, so when you break, if you break it up, the noise, um, we're, we're at the very early stages of it. And yes, there is a lot of noise, but they, they, are, uh, they will be able to, as they, as they get more capabilities, able to profile people, us individually, uh, you know, in examples, they would be able to hear and recognize our voices, uh, know what we said in the past, know our tendencies of the way we speak, know what we're concerned about. Uh, all of those types of things, they would be able to apply that 
And based on what you're trying to do, they would be able to route us to the appropriate backend artificial, uh, in, you know, process, which would also have artificial intelligence. So when it, when it comes to AI kind of entering the marketplace right now, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing probably more focus on consumer behaviors and, you know, how people buy things. I mean, Amazon's digging really deep into this. I mean, they've got troves and troves of data uh, around consumer shopping habits. And you are, you're already starting to see different ads be served up based off of that. And there was an interesting conversation I saw uh, or an article online the other day that uh, there's a fully automated advertising uh, platform that Facebook has rolled out to some of these large retailers like Amazon and Wish, uh, where it's going out looking at where you're looking at and literally serving things up based off conversations that you're having with friends and all these other things. Um, and it kind of went a little wonky and started literally pulling things out of the obscure depths of Wish.com, which has uh, uh, things like drug paraphernalia and other things that it was serving up to people. And it was a very interesting uh, couple weeks where those algorithms and the kind of the machine learning was digging very deep uh, into some dark places. How do you see us transitioning us transitioning from these early stages into you know where we start extracting a lot of real and meaningful value not only on the consumer side of things but in the enterprise space? Yeah, so the uh, there's a few you know pieces to it. the The processing power has to get much quicker to be able to process the enormous amounts of data. Uh, so what the, so what what these um, what we have to do to filter out these noises we, is we need more data, we need more patterns to, to, uh, to establish. And so as, as we progress, uh, or as artificial intelligence progresses, it's going to be able to uh, weed out some of the noise that we're getting, uh, some of the things that are not relevant that maybe, you know, that we're running into. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good use case. Uh, you know, I, I'd start off with just saying, when you have you ever tried to call in for uh, and talk to a computer on anything, let, let's say uh, for a support or for uh, an airline ticket? Uh, I, uh, airline tickets a little bit more advanced support, at least from my perspective. When I when I was uh, trying to uh, purchase an airline ticket, I think it took me probably I estimated about three times as long to to go through and, and, and uh, get that ticket issued. I wanted to go from, from the beginning to the end talking to the computer. And what I found was, is there was a lot of noise. I had to correct a lot of things. Uh, Sorry, I'm I, not sure. <laughs> I felt like, I, I felt like uh, the, the computer understood my voice, but didn't understand what I meant. So sometimes I wasn't phrasing things probably the way the computers or the, intelli the, the system behind the scenes was understanding them, so I was misunderstood a lot. Uh, these are the types of noise or the types of issues that we run into when uh, when dealing with these chatbots or these data entry points today uh, with regards to artificial intelligence. But over time, when we speak to that computer, they're gonna learn what we mean versus what we say sometimes. Mm. Uh, they, uh, uh, artificial intelligence will be able to tell if I'm angry or if I'm happy. Uh, and today, if I say good morning, a human can tell if I'm in a bad mood or if I'm in a good mood, but artificial intelligence cannot do that yet. But it won't be long before it does. And when it does, it will be able to apply some of the feelings that we are communicating in addition to the words that we are saying. Uh, to route us to the right place. Actually, there's already technology out there that's uh, being deployed in call centers that monitors uh, client stress levels and distress <laughs> in the voice and the voice of the agents uh, and sends out <laughs> triggers to uh, managers and other things. So th th that technology is already in the process of, of coming down the pike. So it, it won't be long before computers are going to be our psychologists. So Yeah, <laughs> oh, I can see that being very handy. <laughs> Well, I mean, think, think about what just what just happened even during this recording, right? You know, we've had what two or three times where we're talking generally about other stuff, but the bot doesn't understand that it's not part of the conversation, but it picks it up as like, "Hey, I'm going to interject myself here," mm -hmm. right? And that's and that's what I was, you know, even talking about, you know, with the Alexa thing. It's like if you mention the word, suddenly it thinks it is the center of the universe, mm -hmm. and it jumps in, and it's like, "No, I'm talking about you, mm -hmm. not with you." 
So in, stay in, out of it. In <laughs> fairness, it's a bit like what you have to say to young ch- young children. I'm talking about you, not to you. Please don't interrupt. Exactly. In, in fairness, I changed it to computer because you know I've been wanting to talk to a computer since I was a little kid watching Star Trek. Um, <laughs> yeah. So every time she said computer, it started to trigger, and I was hoping to catch it fast enough. And I finally unplugged her. Uh, but I'm yeah. sure the other Alexa in the mesh network in the house are already plotting my doom. So <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of fascinating things. I don't know if you remember boy, when my kids were young. So I would say in the late '90s there was a game that came out or something where they would take the for for kids where they would take care of an animal mm-hmm. on a, a little uh, device, yeah, the Takamichi or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Tamagotchi yeah. and those things, yeah. Tamagotchi, yeah. Yes, and, uh, and I remember kids, and I don't remember, I, um, I don't necessarily remember my children, because I'll say that because I'm, I'm, on, uh, I'm online here, but uh, I do remember kids crying when those things died, and it was just an electronic uh, animal that they had to feed, feed it, and this thing would actually die, and kids would be upset like they... It was going to be interesting to see how our new generation growing up, as they talk to these these devices and bots, how they mm-hmm. associate them, or if they if they associate them with a real human, and uh, and how they will actually mm-hmm. feel about them, as you know, from a friendship level uh, to a trust trusted person. I mean, is this something that they could come in and tell secrets to? Uh, I, I'm very curious about that. But I know that with with limited time, I do want to touch on one thing. Everybody wants to know: Can robots take over the world? And <laughs> I'll t- I just want to share you my, my opinion on that r- really quickly. Uh, I do believe that is possible. I do believe that they could uh, uh, retaliate or attack us. But I'll tell you how. I don't think it's going to be something like... Uh, like iRobot and Will Smith? Yeah. It, well, <laughs> term- the movie Terminator sort of touches on it a little bit in one of their, one of their, uh, in their movies. But um, what happens is with... Uh, with, imagine a robot. If you have a robot, uh, that robot probably, you know, down the road, we're going to talk many years into the future. The robot's probably not going to sit there and think about how it can overtake you. But what you will have in a robot is a way for it to defend itself. So let's say that if uh, you tell it you're going to, if you, if you if program the robot that if it's pushed and with a certain amount of pressure, you know, with mathematical stuff that they put in there, they'll say, hey, this amount of pressure is bad. The robot's going to, you know, know that uh, it's going to be damaged. So it could detect that you're about to hit it and go into some sort of defensive mode. Now imagine uh, 100 robots working together on something, and they're all programmed to protect each other. So you go grab a baseball bat, and you go to hit one of them, and all of a sudden all 100 uh, robots around you go into defensive mode. And what does defensive mode mean? It might mean a counterattack, meaning it, it'll come and hit you before it hit, you hit that computer. So if you look at that as an example, that's what we're at risk of is we put intelligence into the computers uh, or artificial intelligence as we get, you know, go down the road with all these missile defense systems and missile attack systems that are being, that are out there today. Is it possible that they could be triggered into a defensive mode uh, to protect themselves or supposedly to protect us? But, uh, and that, and that would ultimately mean that it would retaliate by uh, attacking us before we attack them. Right. Yeah, there's certainly a, a lot for us to think about in, uh, in the whole machine learning and intelli- uh, artificial intelligence space. Uh, and as I guess there's a lot of people out there thinking that, you know, robots are going to take their jobs. As you say, robots may take over the world. And uh, it's certainly a topic we could carry on talking about for a, for a lot longer. But um, I see our time is coming to a close. So... Thank you very much for your time today, Marcel. It's been an interesting, an interesting topic to discuss and something I'm sure we'll talk about a lot more in the future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel.